Hello and welcome to another episode of Hive School. My name is Rich Porter and I'm making these videos to help you one up your production workflow. Today we're going to be making content templates, uh, sometimes also called pixel maps. I'm going to show you two different ways that I've certainly used over the years um, to make content templates. The first I would say is a more manual workflow um, that we will produce them in Photoshop and then I'm going to show you a tool that allows you to do things a little bit more automatically. So let's just jump straight in. So the first thing we're going to want to do is work out exactly what we're looking to represent in our um, content template. So um, if we find out the specification of the screen that we're going to use. Um, the row black quartz 4.6 is something that just seems to be turning up on all my shows at the moment, so something I'm quite familiar with. Um, if we had a real show, we'd have a production design which would specify the, the, the shape and the number of LED tiles that we're using on the project. For this, and it's just an example, I'm just going to make up um, an imaginary stage worth of LED so that we can make that content template. So let's say we're going to make some video towers. Let's say that there's going to be six of them and they're going to be two, it's going to be two tiles by 10 tiles in each tower. So that's going to be our, our kind of, that's the template that we're looking to create for our content team. Um, the useful thing that we really want to know about the product that we're using is the, the number of pixels in each tile in the width and the height. So that's our panel resolution, 108 by 216. So before we get into drawing the um, actual towers, we first need to generate a pattern in Photoshop that will represent the tiles. So um, it, here we are in Photoshop. The width, uh, the width to generate the pattern needs to be twice the width of the tile and the height needs to be twice the height of the tile and I'll, I'll show you in a sec why that's important. So the width is 108, we just times that by 2, fairly easy maths here but like we just and then 216 is the height, obviously we need two of those so there's, there's our double resolution. Photoshop generates um, a file of that size, you can press U on the keyboard to create the uh, draw rectangle tool and then again, this time when we create our rectangle, we just want the resolution of one tile. So as we'll remember from here, 108 by 216. So by 216, and that's the size of the uh, rectangle it's going to draw. I'm just going to um, boost that up to the top left corner. And let's, so now we're going to set the, the color of the pattern. So let's uh, give that a nice fuchsia color. I want to make sure that the outside stroke is on, so we'll make that white. And we just see here that it's set to one pixel. So we can click that, um, Control J or Command J if you're on a Mac. Move that down to the bottom right. So that that could be enough, um, but then we'll just we'll, we'll have a second color here. So um, so I grab that bottom one, Control J to duplicate it, and I'm just gonna and pick sort of a semi complementary type color. So there we go. Uh, v to reselect the move tool. Uh, click on it to select it. Control J to duplicate it. And then, so ultimately we've drawn four tiles of the, um, uh, uh, of the black quartz that we're gonna use. Now, I don't actually think you need to select all, but it's, sort of a, a superstition of mine. I've selected all that. I'm going to go up to edit, define pattern. So I don't know, called BQ or something like that. You actually, you actually don't need to label this to make it work. So we defined a pattern. Now we need to, in order to use this pattern, we need to draw the pixel template that we're going to use for our towers. So again, we're going to create a new document. This time, six six towers of two wide. So we've got two wide there, so we can times that by six for our six towers, and we're gonna get uh, one, two, nine, six. And then we said that we were gonna do 10, 10 tiles high. Um, so that's just two, one, six times 10, obviously 2160. So um, now when, once we've got our new canvas, we can go to layer, 
neutral uh, pattern. Open that up. Not the not the default pattern, as lo as lovely as that is. I'm gonna grab uh, our latest one. So I'll be making some other ones in similar colorways there, but we can see by the um, resolution of that that that's obviously the the new one. I wonder if I. I was hoping if I masked over that, I might get to see the name that we set for it. But never mind. So um, we just need to OK this pattern, and now we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six sets of tiles by. If we count down, it should be ten there. So. There's a grid, and then obviously if we had other other video elements on the stage, we could add add the new product to that. But that that would give us a solid set of grids that would uh, be good for a pixel template. Equally, when we get onto site, every single tile should be out should be a colour outlined by a white line. And you can see when you look at where the tiles join together, if you haven't got that one pi one pixel of white either side, then you're going to have some kind of either scaling or alignment issue going on with. So this really helps you when you are implementing your design on site. You are gonna have a pixel template that really matches your real world resolutions and helps you understand if you've lined everything up correctly. So we can take this um, a little bit further. Something that um, can be a bit problematic on site when you've got everything installed and then this tile here for example is having some kind of data issue or something like that it's useful for to help our friends out on the LED team to be able to ident which tile this is um, so I'm now going to show you the, um, the pixel grid generator which was built by Dickie Burford this I haven't found a better way than this to generate tile idents which is Whenever we have a problem with the tile, we want to be able to give it a number which will help us count, possibly even from the back, as to which tile needs to have its data reseated or maybe it's a tile needs replacing or something like that. So, um, download it. It's totally free, although um, I encourage you to make a donation. Um, Dickie's uh, raising money for the Teenage Cancer Trust, so if you use it commercially or at all, then it'd be great if you could help support that. Um, right now, um, I can I can put this uh, link in the comment uh, in the description below. However, um, actually, the the best way to download that these days is um, Dickie's now got it up on both the. Oh, he's got this up on the um, Microsoft App Store and also on the um, uh, Apple App Store. So. Um, you can download it from there. Download that and get it installed. It's, uh, pixel. There we go. So, once you've got it installed, this is a dedicated tool for. Let's just sort of clear our background. Dedicated tool for generating our uh, pixel grids. So, um, starting off here, we're now just going to add some of that information that we were using a little bit earlier. So, our tile. Uh, X or width dimension is 108. Our tile Y dimension is uh, 216. So we know that we're working with um, the correct dimensions for the uh, product that we're using. Um, we know that we've got 12 columns wide and 10 columns tall. So this, this already very quickly, without having to generate a pattern, is um, generate this. If you like um, all of the bits that we can see on the screen, keep them there, we can label that. Um, so six towers or something like that. Um, equally you can sort of turn a lot of these off if you want. If having your company logo on the on the grids is important, you can add that. So if we go to preferences, so I wanted to add my my company logo to, to the grids. You can do that equally. That can be sort of t so. These checkboxes along here, I can basically turn on and off all the different parts of the. So often, what I'll do when I'm generating templates is I actually set no name, so I can label it later in Photoshop. I came here really for the tile IDs, so they're quite important to me. So I'll turn those back on. 
Um, the grid, I think, is quite useful. Um, I quite like it in white, so that's just what we would set here. And then um, he's got a whole load of presets for setting different colorways. So if you want to divide up um, the grids that you're making into different colors, this one might be one color, another product on your stage might be another. That's kind of a useful thing to do. There's some quite, quite nice um, sort of color profiles. Um, you can change if it feels important to you the the way in which the the numbers are uh, tile IDs come out. So different row rows, columns, letters, numbers sequentially. However, whatever feels most important to your workflow, um, but they're all they're all there. Um, if you've got a sort of more complicated uh, design, let's say uh, with some tiles knocked out press uh, I believe it's oh, alt so you, um, if you press alt on the keyboard you can so let's say that we actually wanted to just do um, individual towers for this you know uh, what would this work out to be you know they you could you could take out the tiles that you actually don't want to see there or equally uh, it's control on the keyboard to drop them back in so um, there you go um, once you're um, ready, you can save your grid. I'll just save that onto my desktop. Um, it automatically sets the the width and the height um, of your grid as part of the file name. I'll just save that down. And then if we pop onto the desktop, there we go, we've got a grid. Um, so this could feed into the video that I did last week with the uh, UV unwrapping. Um, uh, one of the methodologies that we used there was to generate our pixel template first, as we've done here, and then uh, use the UV editor to um, UV our model back onto that grid, which is, um, I think, quite a neat way of doing things. So um, maybe this maybe this would have been a better video to do before we got into UV unwrapping, but I think quite a useful thing to do anyway. So. Thank you for watching again this week and uh, I look forward to seeing you in another video quite soon. Thank you.